Hello and welcome to the editorial analysis of the Hindu. Today we shall be discussing the editorial of the 29th of August. So coming to the first article, Democracy and its Discontents. This is an important article because democracy as such is very important as of now. Several questions are being raised as to whether or not this is a valid institution. Has it stood the test of time? All of these questions and debates are what are ongoing and that is why this article becomes important and relevant for us. So coming to the analysis. First and foremost, in the context of democracy, you should know about the history of democracy. Now, basically, democracy is something that originated in the western countries the editorial is talking about these countries primarily it is UK France and US these are the countries where the idea of democracy took birth this was basically a system or an institution that was designed by humans to govern human affairs and that is how the idea came up later this idea was what was exported to other countries including it, india itself india is a democratic country and the idea is what has been taken from western constitutions so this is the first aspect of democracy now despite the fact that this originated in the west it is facing several challenges in these western countries now what are these challenges is what is important these challenges are first and foremost that in majority of these western countries the governments that are formed are coalition governments which means that the governments are not stable and if the governments are not stable then they are unable to pass major laws. Primarily this is what is being seen in European countries and also in the case of US where major laws are what are not being passed. So this is one thing that is important in the context of democracy. So that is one important challenge that is being faced and as a result of which questions are being raised as to whether or not democracy itself is relevant as of now in the world. So that is one important analysis. Another thing that is important is about democracy in the context of India. This is something that is important. Now, contrary to the global picture where democracy is facing challenges, in India, the situation is what is different. We have a stable government. A government has come to power, which is a single party ruled government and many laws are being passed in India. That is no denial. Recently in the parliament session, the most important law in the context of Jammu and Kashmir has been passed. So in India, democracy is very much appearing to be shining. But the issue is that at the top level, democracy is what is doing well. But if one analyzes democracy at the ground level, that is where democracy is not performing well in the case of India. And that is what has been talked about in the editorial. At the ground level, what has happened is that people are not connecting with democracy. After casting our vote once, how many times do we actually participate? participate in the governance barely and that is what is reflecting that democracy at the grassroots level is not aptly functioning in India. Another thing is that this government is a single party government and that is why in the first past the poll system itself it is a majoritarian government and that is why it happens that minorities in the country are feeling insecure and that is why another reason that democracy in India at the ground level is not very much successful so that is important. Another important analysis that I particularly found in the editorial is something of an architecture of institutions. Now basically here the editorial is discussing that democracy is formed of several vertical pillars and these vertical pillars are the primary pillars on which democracy is standing. For example, it could be elections in India, it could be universal franchise, it could be the election commission of India. These probably are the vertical pillars on which democracy is standing. But democracy is not only about these vertical pillars, it is also about some horizontal structures which are combining these vertical pillars. These horizontal structures are the lateral binders. They help in ensuring the strength and stability of a democratic structure. For example, free media could be one of these binders that is enabling that democracy in India is what is sustainable. Free speech could be one of such binders. So these are some institutions which need to be upheld to ensure that harmony is what is maintained amongst the people and democracy is what is sustainable. As of now, these lateral binders in the country are what are not very effective is what has been criticized. Another important analysis is with regards to judiciary. Now, just yesterday I discussed an article where I had discussed that there is an issue or there is a problem of judicial overreach. Now, this editorial is giving us a good analysis. It is saying that because people in this country are not getting an opportunity to participate in the governance, primarily the minorities who's, who are not in the government, what is happening is that then they are resorting to a judiciary, judicial solution. For example, even in the recent case of the dilution of Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, it might be argued that because the state was not heard, it was not heard because there is a powerful government at the center, the people of the state might simply go to the Supreme Court demanding that they have not been heard. But this is what is a very, very complex scenario. This is a problem which is a complex problem. A complex problem is one where multiple stakeholders are involved. Multiple decisions and multiple opinions are to be taken in, a, in this kind of a problem. So the situation that is arising is 
that instead of taking multiple opinions people are simply going to the judiciary and judiciary is not equipped to deal with these kind of matters judiciary is simply based upon interpretation of law and whenever interpretation of law has to be done then either one person is right and the other is wrong for example even in the case of sharing of river waters you should know that in interstate river tribunals river water sharing tribunal judiciary has no role to play and that is one of the visionary aspects of indian constitution because whenever the sharing of water aspect is to be analyzed in that particular scenario an amicable solution has to be achieved through talks between different stakeholders rather than discussing that one state is right and the other state is wrong now that is why the judiciary as such is not able to deliver and there are cases that are emerging where judiciary is appearing to be acting in an over reaching scenario so that is one important analysis which has been offered in the editorial another important analysis is with regards to a three layers of democracy now what are these three layers the first layer of democracy is the basic layer of democracy this is the layer where the public is basically participating this is the public space people here are talking about democracy they are discussing amongst themselves but this space in itself is what is weak there are huge amounts of differences that are there within people and that is why this layer is what is not very effective as such in india despite the fact that we have social media and voice is what has been given to people despite all of that people are not empowered enough to talk and even if they are empowered they are not that the differences between them are so high that this is one space that is not very effective to actually come and resolve some solution another layer is the top layer this is the topmost layer where leaders are there there are parliamentarians we have our elected leaders who are representing us in several legislative bodies now in this particular issue what has happened in this particular layer what has happened is that we have the anti defection law we have a whip and because of this our legislatives are not able legislators i'm sorry are not enabled or empowered enough to represent our views often they are simply towing the party lines even if the decision by the central party is impacting their constituency negatively they cannot voice because they are under a whip so this area is another area that is not functioning so if having these two areas not of these three two layers not functioning well in the democracy what is the option that is left the option is left of another layer which is the intermediate layer now this is what is the gist of this article this is what is the final suggestion here the editorial is advocating that a middle layer has to be created this is where people are participating but they are not politically involved and once this layer is what is active where without any political interest people are talking to each other they are communicating and resolving solutions amicably that is where democracy will actually function so the editorial is advocating that in this scenario india should contribute india should empower this intermediate layer and that is should that should be india's contribution to the world where this kind of an idea is what india can champion as the biggest democracy and this idea later will be adopted by the world to ensure that democracy is aptly functional in the other countries also so that is what is the solution that has been offered in this particular editorial in the context of democracy indeed the article is very very relevant i have told you these kind of analysis can come in the essay paper you can find this kind of question in general studies paper two of me there you could be asked to debate the relevance of democracy so the article is indeed important and very much relevant so that is the importance of this particular uh, article coming to the next article message delivered not a very important article it is context with regards to the recent g7 meet but the article is not talking not highlighting much of the important points but nevertheless i have picked it up for discussion and i will tell you what are the brief points which have been discussed first and foremost analysis is what is drawn on india as well as us now basically we all know there was a controversy recently where us president had announced that india has seeked mediation on kashmir which india had refuted and now recently when this meet of the indian indian prime minister did take place with president trump from us at that point of time this opportunity was what was taken by the prime minister of india and he had openly declared that india will not seek third party mediation in on the issue of kashmir and this matter is a bilateral issue which india and pakistan will resolve so that is the first important aspect of the g7 meet another important thing is with regards to iran now basically the foreign minister of iran was invited but the other members of the g7 did not wish to meet the iran iran's foreign ministers so this is another development that did take place the joint comprehensive partnership agreement that was developed between iran or the p5 plus 1 agreement between iran as well as the other nations is what is in a limbo right now so it that again is what is not resolved so this is important another thing that is important is the signal that us gave on inviting russia now here you should know that after the year 2014 russia has not been invited to g7 uh, to the g7 meet previously this was what was the g8 meet but russia was suspended in the year 2014 after it annexed crimea 
that now us was willing to ensure that russia does come back but the other members did not agree so that is important another important analysis is that in the it is the first time in the history of g7 that a common communique was not issued this time which is clearly reflecting that the group was unable to reach at a solid a solution or a particular Conference was what was not reached and that is one cause of concern here. You might have opportunity to discuss that how deglobalization is taking place, how major institutions are being undermined, how countries are only thinking about themselves and that is where you can give the example of G7 meet where no communique was signed this particular year. So this is one important analysis in the context of the G7 meet. So that's about this particular article coming to the next article. Murders most foul now basically this is a case study this becomes an important example this is an example of honor killing this episode is what has taken place recently where a person has been recently killed under the issue of um, honor killing honor killing is something that is continuous to india india has seen several of these cases of honor killing and recently again a person named uh, mr kevin has kevin joseph who was a 23 year old dalit christian has been killed in kerala so this is one case that has recently appeared some issues are important here first and foremost this is a key phrase that i have picked up that the supreme court has had used recently in the past that there is no honor in honor killing honor killing happens to be one of the major challenges that india is facing major crimes and there is no law on this another law another issue criminal issue that india is facing is with regards to the mob lynching itself so this is again something that is important that honor killing as well as mob lynching both are important challenges which india is facing for which laws are what are required so that is important another thing that is important that the person in question here was a dalit now basically you should know that dalits are not only amongst the hindu religion he was a christian and he was a dalit christian so this issue of discrimination is what is pan india it is across all the religions in india and this is what is one of the pertinent issues and important challenges that our social fabric still faces this example becomes important for general studies paper 1 that is where you could use it in in the, in the uh, aspect of social issues and how discrimination in india is what takes place that is where you can use this particular article another thing that is important here is that death penalty is what has been discussed death penalty is what has not been given here and to, to the criminals and this is again one example despite the fact that owner killing has been accounted as rarest of the rare cases and this was a case that was eligible for death penalty but this is what has been avoided and only two life terms are what have been given so this is again something that is important lastly the editorial is giving us some suggestions there are two aspects of this suggestion the first aspect is that the government has to be proactive the administration has to be proactive it has to ensure that there is prevention of these kind of acts to when to take place whenever it is sensing that these kind of an act can take place it should provide protection to the couple in question it should take remedial as well as punitive measures but what is required in the long run is a law on this as of now there is no stringent law on honor killing very much a law on this is what is required so that is important the marital choices the matrimonial choices of individuals need to be protected so that is what is the entire gist of this particular article indeed important this is going to be a relevant example for your social issues uh, articles or for that matter social issue related answers in general studies paper one otherwise also this is going to be important in essays as an example a question can come on a law related to honor killing or mob lynching in general studies paper two also so that is another area where this could be important so that's about this particular article coming to the next article Kashmir's misinformation vacuum now as obvious from this particular article i have discussed many articles and in particular i have discussed one full video on jammu and kashmir and that is somehow a very very relevant video i would suggest all the students to go and watch that because that is very much an all encompassing video but this is in specific an article about the communications shutdown in jammu and kashmir so that is why i picked it up because this is something that is a little bit more specific now this is a communication shutdown that has taken place in jammu and kashmir since 4th of august there is a complete uh, there's a total communication shutdown that has taken place in the place in jammu and kashmir on the aftermath of the dilution of article 370 cable television is not working cellular services are not working landline and internet are not working and even the postal services have been rendered inoperative is what has been talked about in the editorial so this is important even the hospitals and fire stations have not been spared the services have been suspended even in fire stations as well as in hospitals which is a major 
should call this concern so this is again something that is important another thing that is important in this particular context is that this is what is repetitive in jammu and kashmir this is not nothing new often in jammu and kashmir these kind of cases are what do take place for example an example has been given here that of the 347 cases of shutdown that have been recorded in india since the year 2012 51% are what have taken place in jammu and kashmir so this is showing that how repetitive this issue is but this is what is unprecedented this time because even during the kargil war it has been talked that even during the kargil war during 1999 such kind of a suspension of communication was what did not take place so this is what is again something that is unprecedented in the history so that is what is important another important analysis is that the defense that the government is giving is that it is for the law and order protection this is not being respected in the editorial it is being said i had discussed yesterday also that providing law and order is not a mercy of the government rather it is the duty and the government cannot say that for its performing its own duty it has to take away the rights of the citizens this is an it's an acceptable here some global examples are what have been given this is comes important because this might be a question from the global scenario also in the year 2016 in turkey this had what this kind of a step was what was taken by the turkish government after an attempted coup there so that is where it took place also in the democratic republic of congo Uh, the leader joseph kabila his government has had done such similar kind of a suspension of all communication this was primarily done with the pretext of preventing fake election results in congo for approximately 3 weeks this was what was done but for a country like india which is democratic and it is largely it is the largest democracy in the world this is what is unacceptable so this is important this has several impacts and that is again what has been discussed for example even the manrega wages that people are getting in jammu and kashmir are what are given electronically if internet is not working how will these people get their wages banks and atms are not working because of this issue another simple issue in simple example in simple impact to understand this is that we are all preparing for upsc many of us might be writing our mains soon so if there are students who are going to write their mains in jammu and kashmir imagine a scenario where they do not have internet access you are able to watch even this video through internet and if these students do not get internet facility their preparation suffers what is their fault why should they be given a negative hand just because they are belonging to one particular state this is unacceptable and that is how you have to understand the gravity of the situation another thing is the irony that is there in this particular situation the irony is that where on one hand india is focusing on digitalization focusing on digital india there similarly in one of the states all of these digital services are what have been suspended so that is what is important and that is what is emerging as one of the biggest ironies another important analysis is with regards to section 144 you should know it is the section 144 of the crpc this is what is the colonial relic and the, under this the government ensures that all communication is suspended or there is a curfew like situation is what is imposed and section 144 is the law that is implemented in jammu and kashmir as of now another major issue is with regards to the fundamental rights of the people that have been suspended because of this first fundamental right is the right to speak and expression that is clearly what has been suspended the second fundamental right is the right to assembly peaceful assembly clearly if people are not able to talk to each other communicate then this right is suspended another thing is that effective democratic participation of people is also affected here people have a right to show dissent also if you have a dissent from the government that doesn't mean that you are a criminal what is happening in jammu and kashmir is the criminalization of dissent and this is what is unacceptable is what has been talked about in the editorial so this is the entire analysis here you can get a question on the high um, the authoritarian tendencies of a government in power or anything like that can come in the ethics paper also because these are some tendencies that are being observed as of now questions on mass surveillance or and other such issues are always relevant for ethics paper they can ask you that is it acceptable that in the name of law and order because these are two competitive values privacy of the citizens versus law and order of the citizens is what are two competing values and in ethics paper you can find these kind of an analysis that becomes important also some degree of importance to this particular editor- editorial is also in general studies paper too that is also one area where you could be asked these kind of questions but largely the importance is from the ethics paper so that is where this particular article is important so that's about this particular article and that's about our discussion today thank you all for watching the video